Chip Rogers and welcome to the AHOA Educational Experience. Thank you for joining us again this week as we wrap up our series on CHO and professional development. Here with us this week, um, instructors with the AHOA CHO program. I want to thank you all for being here. Dr. John Hogan and to your left, Kathleen Hogan and Gregory DeShields from the Fox School of Business at Temple University. Let us um, talk about, um, we're going to break this down into nine areas, but three each. So I'm, I'm giving you your task. Um, and we want to talk about operational, we want to talk about revenue generation, and we want to talk about ownership. I want to start, ladies first, operational, Kathleen. So I'm a hotel owner. Uh, I'm thinking that I'm going to participate in this program. And I'm saying to myself, you know what? I think I'm doing my operations pretty good, but I know I can do better. What am I going to get out of, out of this, out of a CHO program to make sure that when I'm done, I know a lot more than when I started? Well, I think you're going to understand what's involved in each of the three areas from the operational standpoint, and I'm specifically talking about human resources, your major support areas, which includes housekeeping, engineering, and energy, and then, of course, accounting. And um, while we talk about them separately, they don't live in silos. They are also integrated, and you have to understand the function of each area and how they relate back and forth one to the other and then of course to the other six uh, modules each in another section of three that you alluded to um, and the biggest takeaway for them is number one going into it they're going to we're going to identify what the takeaways are so they'll be looking to to capture that information and then we tie it all back together again at the end with the uh, review the key terms and and uh, bringing it back full circle to the takeaways to uh, connect all the dots <laughs> so uh, in in each module they will get that but we're finding more and more that uh, because they are so integrated and it's such a people business, you can't talk about one without also touching upon some of the others. In the case of operations, it's good for them to understand the parts of their hotel. You know, when are we talking about operations? When are we talking about revenue? When are we talking about uh, topics that are specific to the owner that may not be part of the staff's world? So uh, they, they get that very, very quickly. Uh, the breakdown of three, 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 um, and my my segment is the HR major support and accounting. You know, having uh, been in that industry for a while myself and having owned small businesses, um, I think this is similar with most owners: mm -hmm. is that you love your employees, but they are without question the biggest headache in running your business because invariably their life problems become your life problems <laughs> and how do you prevent that and I'm sure you at least in this process tell people look here are the things you need to do so that employees are your friends they're your asset but they don't become a problem yes you learn that um, while they're they can be uh, the biggest pain in your day <laughs> they are also your biggest asset because they have a lot of face time with your guests whether it's intended or just a byproduct of functioning in the same space as guests come and go and you need to build them as a team. They need to understand what your mission is, where you're wanting to go, and they have to know what they can do to be a part of it. That's going to add value for them. There, you have a better chance of making them loyal employees, which then cuts down on turnover and the cost associated with that. And everybody can learn a little bit about other people's world, even if you're not a housekeeper, you can maybe gain some understanding of accounting. Again, everybody everybody is working together. So that is, is very important. And your staff is going to do that for you. You can delegate instead of trying to do it all yourself. And one of the, one of the points of distinction we bring up is that you don't abdicate, you delegate. <laughs> that, I can see where that would be critical. You know, it's so interesting because you can walk into those businesses and it's across every endeavor in the business world, and find those employees who you can just tell in your interaction, they love doing their job, they love working there, they love being part of that team. And I find myself frequenting those businesses more than I am the ones where I walk in and I feel like the person is just looking at their watch, figuring how much longer do I have to go. Right. So that's so critical. All right, revenue generation. Gregory, this is your area of expertise. Right. Um, 
what is a what is a hotel owner going to get out of this? If, if, if they probably come in thinking, oh, I know how to make money. This is very simple, right? Right. <laughs> well, I think it's important, you know, looking across sales and marketing and front office and uh, revenue management and technology that we really uh, focus on the fundamentals of, of revenue generation. And I think in each one of those components, there are some um, basic ideas of what you should do but then putting those in the form of a strategy or some strategic plan allows you to have a much more focused approach on how you'll generate the revenue. It doesn't just walk through the door, there really has to be a plan behind that. And through the sales effort, the idea is to understand your customers and building the relationships and having those one-on-one -on -one intimate involvements with them because that relationship that a client has with you is really what could make the difference between whether they book with you or they book with someone else for their group or for their individual room nights. Uh, from a marketing perspective, it's really understanding how you're positioned and how are you raising that visibility about your organiza organization, whether it's through direct advertising, whether it's you know working through the internet or whether it's just building good public relations. The idea, once again, is understanding the fundamentals about it and how it ultimately fits into whatever your master strategic plan is to achieve those numbers and that through the fundamentals that are taught in the class that you have a sense of monitoring it to make appropriate um, revisions and adjustments when necessary. You know, from a revenue um, management perspective in the front office, it's being agile. It's understanding that the business doesn't move in a stagnant way. And a good revenue manager is doing an analysis constantly of the market, understanding what their competitors are charging and understanding how they play within that particular um, marketplace and having a flexibility of activity at that front office to price yourself accordingly and look for those opportunities when they exist. But once again, it's all building off of what was the plan that was established for us in terms of what our revenue goals are. And then from a technology perspective, it's understanding the variety of resources that are available, being creative in your mindset and using various forms of technology in order to create these new avenues of revenue for your organization. You know, one of the things that I think is brilliant in the industry today, it's looking at a tiered approach and providing Wi-Fi at a, um, a base level and an accelerated or a premium level. And that's a creative approach to generate even additional revenue in your organization using technology. And that's the creativity that we like to explore. But once again, realizing that it all builds off of a, a fundamental approach to business whatever your strategic plan is and then ultimately executing it. And it's interesting because your revenue generation, as you said, it, people don't just walk through the front door and hand you money. Uh, I mean, it has to go back to, as you talked about, personnel, staff. If those two aren't working together, neither one's going to work, right? Correct. And what's really important is to understand that this, you know, some of the decisions that are going to be made about your ability to make money are those people who are on the front line. So these strategies and whatever the goals are really need to be communicated within your organization so that everyone is a part of it. You know, they may not need to know all aspects of your financial plan, but they should know what direction we are headed in so that they can contribute in their way to the success of the organization. Absolutely. All right, we, we do have to take a break here real soon and we may have to carry this over in the next segment. But so you're the owner Mm -hmm. And you're, as Kathleen said, you're going to not advocate, but you're going to delegate a lot of what Greg talked about, revenue generation. Certainly a lot of the personnel is going to be delegated. But from an ownership standpoint, you got to know some of the real big picture items. Number one, without question, leadership. That, that is absolutely critical. Without leadership, no one follows. Well, that, become, that is our opening, our opening module because it does set the foundation for the, the entire success in business and from a hotel owner point of view we go through and are able to share some definitions but more importantly we get them to draw out examples of what you were saying about how do you find good loyal professional staff members that really care not just looking at the clock to see when am I finished or saying next so we go through and we get them to to share their own ideas about the differences between leadership and management and when to use different styles you can be an authoritarian military type leader sometimes if there's a fire we don't want to take a vote on something who's going to do what we have to have an order we have to have had a system in place on the other hand the way you look at one of the most successful airlines in the united states is one that has done a lot of team building where everybody does a little bit of everything else 
and sharing those great ideas. And so that's why the leadership ends up being the absolute uh, essential one to, to, to lead the program off with. All right, when we come back from the break, we're gonna stay on, on ownership and we're gonna talk about one of the most important issues that um, catch so many people, uh, at least it catches their interest because it's not why they got into business and that is the legal aspect of running a business. So we'll, we'll talk about that coming up right after this. Welcome back. I'm Chip Rogers. Thanks for watching the AHOA Educational Experience. We are wrapping up our multi-part series on CHO and the CHO program led by three of my guests that are here today. Thank you so much for being with us. In the last segment, we talked about operational human resources. We talked about revenue generation, um, and then we touched on ownership. And we began with leadership, but there's that, there's that part of owning something that, that is the unfortunate part we'll start with, and that is you know, sometimes in business, you got to incorporate lawyers. Now, <laughs> nothing against lawyers. You love them when you need them, but when you don't need them, you don't really want them around because they cost a lot of money. In the area of, of, of being a service provider, you're going, to have to ha you're going to have situations that arise where you're going to need legal resources. What can you do to prevent that from happening? And if, in fact, you do need it, what are the steps you need to take? Well, I'm not a lawyer and we don't pretend to ever give legal advice specifically. We do recommend that AHOA members, in fact, use their resource of AHOA membership and they get a certain number of calls each year that they can call the AHOA office at no, no charge and they can get some, at least some general guidelines and some general direction. What we do in the legal section of it, and actually it is the one that is the most hotly debated, it is the one that has the most involvement. It's the one that gets people's uh, uh, fervor up. Either why can I not? Why why may I do this or why may I not do this sort of thing? And a lot of my background in, in the past few years and continuing is I, I serve as an expert witness and and work with many hotels on how to provide uh, what's called reasonable care. It's a legal definition. The law in the United States is based on if there's the fact if there is not a specific law in a city, state, or on a national basis, then it follows pretty much English law, English common law, and so it becomes what industry best practices are. Reasonable care is what a reasonable, reasonably prudent person would do under similar situations. It's why we no longer have diving boards in hotels because, in fact, that was a danger because people unintentionally, but they ended up hurting themselves and, and became paralyzed. We no longer have hard room keys. We have plastic the inserts because those systems became very affordable. So we go over a whole range of things in, in dealing with employment law, uh, safety and security, uh, food service areas in general, and we literally cover uh, 12 or 15 case studies. We will go through and give them some specific examples and then we'll get the whole class to participate. Everything from how do I collect on a no, someone who violated a no smoking agreement that they signed on to can, can somebody under 18 actually register at my hotel. All those things that owners really need to know where to look. There's not always a black and white answer, but there's always a place to look and to have a common sense approach. And that's what we were able to share with them on a regular basis. Always exciting to, to have that, that segment. And reasonable care, if you exercise it properly, will keep you out of most trouble, right? <laughs> most, most of the time, but you have to go through and sort of anticipate. The biggest thing within reasonable care is, was something foreseeable? If it was the first time it never happened before, you have a much stronger defense than if it, there was a problem that repeated itself each of the last six Fridays and you didn't do anything about it, you're probably gonna have the potential of some, some serious legal liability. And that's what we try to very clearly on the ownership perspective of it, saying this is how you can avoid it. We, we teach people the, the, the comfort level within themselves to not be afraid of the law, to respect it and figure out how to embrace it. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go to lawyers and it doesn't necessarily have to cost you a lot. It means working with your insurance carrier and not viewing them as the, as, as the adversary. Right, all right, so you know, we, we think of lawyers, we think about how expensive they are, we wanna stay out of their office unless it's absolutely necessary. But sometimes things go really well and sometimes you say, you know what, I've, I've done pretty good at this. I've, I took CHO and, and I, I've run my hotel, hotels very successfully, and now I would like to take these assets and give it to the next generation. And certainly in the AHOA world, 
Um, it's a family business, and the next generation will take it over sometimes. But you've got to know the legal and proper process for doing that, right? Absolutely, and that's when you want to see your attorney. Um, I think the first thing you want to look at is how have you set up your business? Is it Are you a sole proprietorship? Are you an LLC? The way it's viewed under the law and, and some of the risk that you're taking in the way that you set it up, we touch upon that a little bit. Um, there are some absolute necessary things to do, and one is a SWOT analysis. In fact, a SWOT analysis can be done at any time pretty much by anyone within the parameters of their body of knowledge. Uh, any any uh, function within the hotel for any purpose, it's great for marketing and figuring out what you want to do next. Um, and it all helps you uh, do a strategic planning that's going to benefit the uh, the ownership going forward and staying a profitable business. And if you have something good, you do want to pass it on to your children. So then you want to see that attorney. You want to look at what do I need to put in place for succession planning so that I can ensure it will be there for, for my children and their children and so on. So all of that is discussed. And um, it's remarkable to us how many have not done a SWOT analysis. And so we have spent uh, some time doing that and I think they had a big takeaway from that. Before you even get to uh, the legalese of the succession plan, just, you know, where are you going? What, what do you want from your business going forward into the future, aside from being able to give it to children? All right, and perfect segue, Greg, as we finish up this, this series, and that is, where are we going? Beyond just where is your individual business going, Where's the hospitality industry going and, and the importance of continual education uh, in an industry that is changing at a pace faster than ever before and probably not going to slow down? Well, the industry continues to be an ever durable uh, part of today's society. It is an economic engine and it has become acknowledged as such. So it continues to be a huge value to our country and to our economy. Uh, as it relates to the field itself, it's becoming much more uh, credible. These types of certifications really professionalizes the industry. Uh, it becomes much more specialized and focusing on the financial aspect of it so that most hotels will operate at a very profitable rate. You know, the idea of revenue management 20, 30 years ago was just something that happened on its own. And today it's really a very scientific um, and, and mathematical uh, approach to how you uh, are successful in uh, making your business a success. So I see it as a continued economic engine becoming much more sophisticated, certainly requiring much more certification and much more knowledge and insight in terms of how to be a successful business. And John, you get the last word. Um, CHO, if you're certified, it doesn't guarantee success, but um, you probably stand a better chance at success. It will probably help you get a easier time with getting your project financed. You will have the resources of being perhaps with a brand and be able to use those resources, but you still have to go through and take whatever those other uh, tools that are out there and, and, and move it forward to yourself. The advantage of having a CHO is it gives you that sense of pride of accomplishment. It gives you networking within the wonderful, fabulous uh, organization of AHOA that is built on, on, on mutual respect. It's built on a little bit of disagreement so that we can come together and come up with that general approach on things. And they do the networking within the AHOA organization better than hardly than anyone I've seen. Um, I know within AHOA, many of the members are so confirmed and convinced they want to improve themselves through ongoing continued learning. And so they are looking at a whole series of different programs, uh, uh, an additional higher level for this program. They're looking, they've talked with Kathleen already about doing some things, supporting some of their women's initiatives and not just business, some of it on, on time life balance, work life balance. They're looking at things for the under 30 or the young professionals to try to deal with and, and address the needs of the, of the next generation coming through. And the CHO is just going to continue to evolve because so many members embrace it and the board and the, uh, the committees and, and uh, throughout the entire organization recognizes that that's how they're, they're all going to become more successful, more profitable. 
Well, thank you so much. This has been, uh, for me individually, a learning experience, but I know for our, for our viewers and certainly uh, all the members of AHOA, this is uh, what you do makes their life a little bit easier. So um, for our guests, Gregory DeShields and Kathleen and John Hogan, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, if you'd like to reach me, you can do so via email, chip at ahoa.com, chip at ahoa.com. I hope you've enjoyed this series. We'll be back next week with another show. Join us then.